This past month, I've gotten to do a lot more 3D printing than I've done in a really long time, and I've probably ran through about five kilograms of material. I'm working on a few different projects, and in total, I'm probably printing somewhere between 100 to 200 parts, roughly. And due to that, I've had to do a lot more batch 3D printing than I would typically do. Years ago, batch 3D printing was something I was very hesitant of, and it was always scary when I had a full tray of parts, but 3D printers have gotten a lot better over the years. Aside from making sure your bed is leveled and that your printer is dialed in, there are a couple of things you can do when you're batch 3D printing to sort of ensure or help with your success. And the first is sequential printing. We covered that about a year ago, and basically it's exactly that. Your printer has a tray of parts, but it prints an entire object at one time, then moves on to the next object, completes it, and then continues on until it's done. And and the cool thing about that is if a part fails two or three in, you've at least got some of the parts that are good and you don't lose your entire batch. However, there are some caveats like you can only have objects that are as tall as your X gantry and that you can only populate your bed so much because of the fact that the hot end and the extruder needs to be able to move around without bumping into those other parts. Octoprint has been one of my favorite add-ons to any 3D printer because it allows you to wirelessly control and access just about any 3D printer. And although Octoprint is incredibly powerful in itself, what really makes it super powerful, at least in my opinion, is the wide range of plugins that have been created by the community that add a host of different features to the Octoprint instance. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at one of my favorite plugins, which is the Cancel Object plugin. And as the name implies, it allows you to cancel an object mid-print. So if you have a tray of parts, one of the parts you see failing, well, instead of having to babysit it or worry about getting a spaghetti mess all over everything, you can just tell Octoprint to cancel a specific object and it will act like it was never there and continue on with the rest of your parts, which is something incredibly powerful for batch 3D printing. We'll go over how to get this plugin installed in Octoprint, the couple of small changes that need to be made within your slicer to make it work correctly, and then of course we'll see the plugin in action. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. This video does assume that you're already running Octoprint. If you're not and you need help with the install process, I did just make a video a couple of months ago that has the latest and I would say easiest method of getting it up and running on your Raspberry Pi. And I'll place a link in the description of this video over to that one so that way you can go ahead and install it and then come back and follow along to get the cancel object plugin installed. As far as installation on the Octoprint side, it's really easy to do. All that you need to do is head up to the settings icon, which is the wrench icon in the top toolbar and click that. Then on the left hand side, what we're looking for is the plugin manager. Clicking on that will open up all of the currently installed plugins and the ones that are already available to activate or deactivate. And we'll need to head up to the get more button. This will allow us to install a pretty wide range of plugins that people have created for Octoprint. Now in the search bar, if you just search the word cancel or cancel object, you'll see the Octoprint cancel object plugin. It says cancel single objects during a print based on G code command lines. That is what we want to install and clicking the blue install icon will install that plugin. It's a fairly quick process and shouldn't take more than, I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds. And when it does complete, you will see a button on the right hand side letting you know that you need to restart Octoprint in order to activate the plugin or for it to take effect. And so the last step as far as an Octoprint right now is to click restart now, which will reboot your Octoprint instance. If everything went correctly when Octoprint reboots, you should see in the top right a little drop down menu and you should have the option or the link for the cancel objects page, which as of right now will be blank. That's fine. We need to do a couple of other things first. In today's video, I'm going to be using this IKEA Brewer cable hook hanger. Uh, anyone that knows me knows that I love these carts. I actually have five of them in my tiny place and these look super handy. So figured it was a great model to use in today's example. Aside from installing the plugin in Octoprint, we do need to make a couple of changes to our slicer. I'm going to be covering both the Prusa slicer and Cura changes that need to be made. In Prusa slicer, you'll need to head over to the print settings tab and click on the output options. And you'll need to make sure that the label objects checkbox is checked. For the Prusa MK3S Plus profile that came baked into Prusa slicer, it was already checked. I don't know if that's the case with all profiles. So definitely make sure that you first check this. And if it's not checked, go ahead and check it. 
Additionally, we need to head over to the printer settings and at the end G code, we'll need to add a line semicolon printing object and G code. I'll have it on screen here and I'll have my best to actually have it in the description of this video, but you will, you will need to enter that into the top line again in the ending G code. Now we are ready to print. So I'm going to take this hook and just copy it a couple of times. So I've got one in the middle and one in both corners and we are ready to go. But first I will jump over to Kira and just show you what needs to be done in Kira. The creator did state that when you cancel an object sliced in Kira, it will cancel the object, but if it has supports, the supports will continue to print. So definitely something to consider. In Kira, it's really similar, but we need to make sure that combing is disabled. If you have combing enabled, it will not allow the cancel object to function properly. So you'll need to head down to combing mode under travel and make sure it's turned off. And then similarly to like we just did in Prusa Slicer, we will need to add something to our ending G code. In Cura, you'll just go over to manage printers, select whichever printer profile you want to change, select machine settings, and then you can enter in the NG code. For Cura, it's slightly different. It's semicolon, capital mesh, uh, colon, capital end G code. Again, it's on screen and, the, and it will be in the description. So that way you can just copy and paste it and make sure that it's all correct. And for Cura, you are now ready to go. So heading back over to Octoprint, I went ahead and uploaded the file that we sliced in Prusa Slicer and I hit print. Now, if we head over to the cancel object tab, we can actually see all of the different objects that we have on our bed. So if you were printing different STLs, it would of course be very easy to tell which object is failing or which object you want to cancel. In our instance, I have no idea which one is copy zero, copy one, copy two, three or four, because they're all the same object and those copy numbers don't really mean anything to me. The very cool thing about this plugin is that as it's printing an object, like the first hook in this example, if we head over to the cancel objects, you can see that red box around that particular STL. And so the awesome thing that it does is as it's printing a specific object, it will always have that red box around it. So even if for some reason you don't know what the name of the specific one is you want to cancel, or in our instance where we've got the same name for all of them, you can just confirm by seeing which red box is currently printing and that will allow you to know which print you want to cancel if of course it fails. And if you do want to cancel an object on this cancel object page, you just go over that STL, click the cancel button. It'll say, hey, are you sure you're going to cancel this object? And you select yes. And instantly like that, it's grayed out and canceled. So when it goes in time to print that, like in this example, it's heading over to print out that hook and it says psych <laughs> and goes over and skips it. And it only did that the first time. After that, it won't make that sort of weird movement. It is that simple to use the plugin and super effective. And I went ahead and just started canceling different hooks. I took it down from the five we started with down to just two, and then I let it print for quite a bit longer. And I, I wanted to have an example where let's say a part actually failed. So on this, I'm just printing PLA on the Prusa. It, it would be tough to get it to make this fail, but I decided to just take off the front print. Let's just, let's just say to simulate what would happen if the part had come loose from the bed and you can then go ahead, cancel that object and let the remaining file or files, I, again, I could have kept more of them on, finish. And I just think it's incredibly powerful. One of the main fears I had over the years with batch 3D printing is if you lose one, you almost always lose them all because of the spaghetti mess or it bumps in another part or it can just be catastrophic. But if you're someone that does a fair amount of batch 3D printing, or even if you're not, this is just an absolutely amazing plugin that you should definitely have. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have a much better idea of how the cancel object plugin works and how to install it. And this is going to be one of my default plugins I install on just about every printer that I have that's running Octoprint. Let me know in the comments down below if you already knew about this plugin, or if you end up giving this plugin a try, what you think of it. Also, if there is a specific plugin that you would like to see covered on this channel, let me know in the comments down below as well. I have a couple of more that I plan on covering over the following weeks or months here, but I always love getting feedback from you guys. And if there is something that maybe I don't have on my list, let me know and I will see about adding it. 
On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from Modbot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.